Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Andrew Mercer. Now I'm going to try to uh, show you a little bit about the brake system on this RD400. I have a, I've had a problem with the brakes, with the rear brakes on this bike a little while ago and I repaired the problem. But I thought it might be, some, might be something that you'd like to know how it actually worked and how I did it. So I'm going to go back over what I did to repair a problem that I've already repaired. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Okay, so as you can see, the RD400 has a, a rear disc brake. Now, this, this, the caliper on this disc is a, is a two-piston type caliper. Now, what that means is that there's, like a, there's a puck about this big on this side of the caliper, and there's another one on the other side of the caliper. Now, these pucks, or ca these pucks have to be able to move, or pistons, I'm sorry, have to be able to move back and forth freely. So, when I depress the, the rear brake pedal, the pressure, the hydraulic pressure through this brake line forces the calipers or the, the, to, to squeeze in on these pistons or pucks, squeeze in snug and pinch the disc. And that's how it works. Now, a problem happens in a lot of these old bikes where uh, old crud and rust and dirt gets caught in around the, uh, the seal on the, uh, the, the, the piston inside the caliper, the pistons. And that old dirt keeps the piston from retracting enough. So it, it keeps a little pressure on the disc and this causes the disc to drag. Now having dragging discs, <laughs> well it can be a drag, uh, this can be really dangerous because the, um, it basically means that the, 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 the brakes are always applied a little bit all the time. Um, this can cause uh, heating in the brake uh, disc itself, and it can also cause the, the brake to seize up, and uh, it, you could have like you know major um, rear wheel seize up, uh, you know while you're driving along, and uh, nobody enjoys that. So um, that's the kind of problem I was having with this bike. Um, I was having a little bit of drag on the the disc, so I had to dismantle the disc in order to uh, solve the problem. So let me show you how I did that. The RD four hundred uh, rear caliper is held on by two, uh, what is this, 14, 14 millimeter? 17 millimeter uh, bolts, these two right here. So in order to release the caliper, the first thing I'm gonna do is to release these bolts. I'm not gonna disconnect the brake line because I may not need to do that. If I disconnect the brake line, it causes a lot of other issues. So we just take the caliper off first. Okay, let's try that. You want to have your brakes tight. Now keep track of all your bolts. You should have a little tray to put your bolts in if you can. I've got this little magnetized tray that I put my stuff in. It works really well. You can stick it onto the bike if you need to. And that way you won't lose any of your bolts. Or your washers. Okay, so there we go. That's the second one. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to um, negotiate with this disc, this caliper. Sometimes these can be a little bit tangly to get off, but this one's not too bad. Now I'm just going to move the camera around a little bit. I want you to see this. These are the two brake pads themselves. I lifted it up a little bit so you can see. There's actually two here, one for the back and one for the front. And they have, you can see it has a little indicator on it. Now what that means is, it shows how much brake wear you have. As these indicators get closer and closer to the disc, you know you need to replace your brake shoes. Now these are the, your brake pads. Now these are actually pretty close, so they're almost ready to be replaced. In fact, I will replace them while I'm doing this bike. Okay, so now let's remove the caliper. Now, I'm going to try to catch my, di my pads because I don't want them to fall out on the ground. Okay, so there we go. My pads have come out. Here's the first one. And you can see here that this is the, uh, the fiber that goes against the, the brake pad, the disc, I'm sorry, itself. And you can see there's not a lot left on this one. This one is, is pretty close to needing to be replaced. And the other one is a little thicker. Now that's, a, that's usually a common sign when you have your brakes dragging because it meant that the one that was thinner was the one that was dragging. Generally that's what that means. This one's not bad. 
but I'll replace them both. So let's haul this off now. So the way you do it is you tip it up and be careful of your of your brake line up on top here because you don't want to kink anything. So be careful of this here. Just keep an eye on it. And there we go. So now we have it off. So this is the brake caliper itself. And, um, and it's still connected to the brake line. So if I pressed on the, uh, the brake pedal, which I might add I, you don't want to do, uh, it would actually press in the pistons and make them the caliper close. Okay, I've locked in my focus now, so I think this should be good. Okay, so so here we go. Uh, this is a little dirty, so I, I would uh, what I did was I uh, I cleaned it out with some with with some uh, brake cleaner and and try to use brake cleaner like uh, you buy the proper stuff in the Princess Auto or Canadian Tire or somewhere like that. So buy brake cleaner and and gave it a good spray, cleaned it off with a rag and a toothbrush and a little pick I had to clean around the edges and I, I tried to get as much as I could out. And then uh, tried to clean it up as much as I could. And then I started trying to work it with screwdrivers. Let me just show you what I did with that. Okay, so <clears throat> sometimes, I don't have a, a big elaborate garage here. I'm not a Jay Leno or anybody. But I have a few things kicking around. So uh, the, ca the, the, the actual pistons, as you can see the top one here, this one was sticking down a little far. So I used uh, screwdrivers and things to try to wedge inside to kind of press it up inside and try to do equally around because if you do it on one side more than the other it may get a little off balance and it won't it'll kind of jam so I pushed up and pushed up with different screwdrivers and I you know rooted around with another one to try to try to loosen it up just improvising and then the last thing I used was I actually had this uh, just piece of I don't even know what this is it's just a little piece of metal and it was it was a great size because it fit right in and I was able to uh, f force the, um, the, the, the calipers, sorry, the pistons, right back into place again. And they popped right back in perfectly. And then once they, well, they popped back, I was, able to, uh, I was able to feel my fingers. I could feel them moving. Because there is a rubber seal that goes right around the, the piston. So I was able to feel that moving in and out. And, and I was able to work with my fingers a little bit. And um, <clears throat> cleaned up around. As it moved out of the way, I cleaned around inside with some brake cleaner and and then a rag and things and cleaned it up as much as I could. So then I felt that it, it was going to move better than it was. So I was ready to put it back together. Again, it really needs to be taken apart and cleaned up entirely. But I didn't want to do that because I know I'm going to be dismantling the entire bike. So I didn't want to do that now. So now I was ready to put it back on the bike. Now I'm going to go through another step here that I went through because when I did this, I actually disconnected this hose. And when you disconnect this hose, you're opening up the brake system, the brake fluid system. And I had to deal with bleeding the brakes because I got ear in the brake line. So this is quite common, but there's a way to fix it. There's a way to do it so you can get the ear back out. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, anybody can do it. So let me show you that next.